Good afternoon. We resume business this afternoon with portfolio questions on culture, tourism and external affairs. The first question from Michelle Ballantyne. Thank you. Ask the Scottish Government what support it will provide to the Scottish Chamber Orchestra to assist with its upcoming summer concerts in the south of Scotland. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. Uh, the Scottish Chamber Orchestra and the other national performing companies are committed to performing their work across uh, the whole of Scotland for their summer tour. The orchestra will travel to the south of Scotland in June, more specifically to Stranra Ryan Centre, Annan Academy and Galashiels Volunteer Hall. Scotland's five national uh, performing companies, including the Scottish Chamber Orchestra, are currently in their 12th year of direct funding relationship with the Scottish Government that started in April 2007 and for the financial year, April 2019 to March 20, the Chamber Orchestra was given funding of just over £2 million. Michelle Ballantyne. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and as she will know music has always played an important part in Scottish culture and particularly in the south of Scotland where you'll see it everywhere you go. But does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that participation and a future in participating in particularly in this high level of music should be open to all young people and is she aware of an education committee's recent report on instrumental music tuition where there are growing concerns about the inequality of opportunity for young people so will she join me in making sure that all young people have an opportunity to go on to actually participate at this high level of music that you are currently supporting <laughs> Uh, I actually agree with the member. I feel passionately that uh, music uh, tuition should be accessible to all young people. I think it's unfortunate that some local authorities, uh, including the one in which my constituency is, have chosen to impose extremely high uh, fees where previously they have none. And there are councils that continue to provide free tuition. Uh, my responsibility is not in education or instrumental music tuition. It is in the cultural aspects. And within that, I have managed on successive and in successive years to protect the Youth Music Initiative, which is uh, a, a means by which all children in primary school have access to participation. Our challenge is how to meet that growing demand when they go to secondary. And I, and indeed the Cabinet Secretary for Education has met with John Wallace and uh, the Music Education Group, who have been working with a number of different partners to see how that vision that I think she and I share uh, can be realised. Thank you. Question number two, John Scott. Thank you, Presiding Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what discussions it has had with South Ayrshire Council regarding the preservation of listed buildings and other built heritage. Uh, the Scottish Government recognises the economic, the social and the cultural importance of our built heritage and is keen to ensure that this hugely important asset is protected appropriately and proportionately. The protection of our heritage assets has been statutorily uh, delegated to local government in its role within the planning and development process and Historic Environment Scotland. Uh, the Scottish Government only becomes involved in strategic or specific issues. I am aware that officials have spoken with representatives of South Ayrshire Council regarding, amongst other subjects, the potential preservation and renovation of listed buildings, but these conversations are part of a wider discussion. John Scott. Thank you, Sir. And, and she will be aware of the expected reports on the station at Ellen Air, which is a Grade B listed building. If the structural report is optimistic about the practicability of saving this building, will the government offer, through its various agencies, the practical and financial support to return this building to worthwhile public and private sector use. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, obviously, in terms of development of the station, this would be led by South Ayrshire Council as part of its wider regeneration. Um, Historic Environment Scotland are already involved in the uh, Air Station Task Force Group with other agencies. Uh, they also attended and spoke at an Air Town Centre conference organised by the Air Station Hotel Community Action Group Civic Society on this issue recently. Uh, they have also, in December uh, 2018, provided a summary of considerations to Transport Scotland about what needed to be discussed or justified in any listed building consent application, uh, depending what uh, uh, proposal is, 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 uh, is come up with in relation to the future of the hotel. And they will continue to provide active advice to help secure the long-term future of the hotel in relation to what is decided by the local community and council of what they need. So they are already proactive in their help in terms of funding. Obviously, some of these issues will be operational uh, for Historic Environment Scotland, but I keep a watching brief on this and they report to me and I will continue to take a keen interest in the issue. Question three, Richard Lyle. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what steps it is taking to help the film industry. 
Cabinet Secretary. Uh, we are strongly supporting our vibrant uh, screen sector through significantly increased Scottish Government funding, uh, while the recently launched Screen Scotland is helping to grow the industry with streamlined public sector support. Since its launch last year, Screen Scotland has expanded the Production Growth Fund for film and introduced new funds for television skills and talent development, including the Broadcast Content Fund. That fund has already awarded a funds totalling £1.3 million pounds to 10 Scottish-based companies, including Firecrest Films, Once Were Farmers and Blazing Griffin, uh, to support production and new programme development. Figures from Creative Scotland show screen sector production spend has risen to a record high of £95 million, while we're seeing more high-profile films and network TV drama being made in Scotland, such as Outlaw King, The Cry and The Victim, and infrastructure, uh, infrastructure is important to continue this growth, and we welcome Screen Scotland's tender in December to seek a private company to convert and operate the Palamas building as a high-end studio, and we look forward to the outcome of this project. Richard Lyle. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that uh, answer, and that's quite impressive. Um, but can I ask also, what action has the Scottish Government uh, taken, or is taken, to encourage outside production firms, or in fact producers, to come to Scotland? And does any department within the Cab Se Cabinet Secretary's portfolio have regular discussions with the film industry? Cabinet uh, the creative industries uh, officials, the creative industries officials within my department, have regular discussions with film companies. Uh, I myself was at Blazing Griffin, a Scottish-based company, uh, only last week, uh, and discussing some of the opportunities they have, both on film and indeed on television, and indeed for, for their interests also on gaming. So uh, the responsibility, however, to support inward investment and production uh, lies with Screen Scotland and indeed other city and uh, other organisations within Scotland. We're a very attractive place to locate, but the big difference with what we're doing now is to ensure that Indigenous Scottish companies uh, can generate uh, recurring drama and also films that are attractive to broadcasters to screen all over the world. Claire Baker. Um, thank you, President Officer. In November at the Culture Committee, Ian Munro from Creative Scotland gave the committee an update on Scottish screen plans for a film studio and talked about the process for testing state aid rules. The Cabinet Secretary has already briefly referred to that, but can she provide any further information on progress in this particular area and the tender process? Uh, the tender process is proceeding. Uh, Scot the Scottish Screen and uh, within Creative Scotland are finalising that process. Uh, I'm not in a position to share that, but it's, in, it's reaching the final stages of that tender process. Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that uh, with the high demand for quality uh, productions uh, is ever increasing, that additional studio capacity uh, should always be under consideration, and that, therefore that a studio in Inverclyde would actually offer such additional capacity? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, screen Scotland leads on the expansion and delivery of infrastructure for the screen sector. Uh, currently, they market 136,000 square feet of full time converted sp uh, stage space and 335,000 square feet of build space across Scotland. I've just answered a question about the uh, current ongoing tender, but I have said and, uh, repeatedly that uh, there is room in Scotland for more than one studio. Indeed, we already have a studio in Ward Park. If there is a private sector company uh, willing to take forward uh, development of studio space uh, in Inverclyde, that would be very welcome indeed. I'm not aware of current uh, uh, plans or proposals to do so. Question number four, Gail Ross. Thank you. To ask the Scottish Government, what research has taken place into citizens' engagement and satisfaction with the new BBC Scotland channel? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the Scottish Government welcomes the launch of the new channel in Scotland and continues to urge the BBC to take a strategic lead in developing the creative industries in Scotland. UK regulator Ofcom carries out research into public attitudes to the BBC, including in Scotland, to inform its assessment of how the BBC is performing against its public purposes. Television viewer figures are collated by the Broadcasters Audience Research Board. Gail Ross. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer. There is a perception that the majority of the filming and production for the new channel is concentrated in the central belt. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that this is the perfect opportunity to enable all parts of Scotland, including my own constituency of Caithness, Sutherland and Ross, to produce quality and meaningful content for the new channel? And will she encourage the BBC to make use of the talent that we have throughout the country? 
Uh, clearly, the BBC is independent and makes its own individual creative decisions, but in our arguments uh, to ensure there was more spend in Scotland, uh, I and indeed uh, the other MSPs within this Parliament argued that all of Scotland should be represented. And so therefore, in terms of uh, encouraging them, yes, I would encourage them to uh, locate uh, productions uh, in different parts of Scotland. BBC Alba, who a uh, vast uh, majority of their output is from independent um, commissioned producers and uh, they do so very effectively and we would encourage the BBC to do, uh, do so also. Uh, but you might be aware that a number of the production companies that uh, exist and are performing very well in terms of new productions are located themselves uh, within the central belt and a part of growing the sector is to make sure that one we have more successful production companies that have recurring series particularly drama um, but also uh, see the opportunities uh, for creative work to happen all over Scotland. But again, I would reiterate uh, the BBC is independent of government, so I can't tell them what to do. Question number five, Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, to ask the Scottish Government what support it offers to tourism businesses in the North East. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the Scottish Government supports Visit Scotland to maximise the economic benefits of tourism across all of Scotland, including the North East. Visit Scotland works closely with public sector partners and local tourism businesses to ensure that Scotland's destinations offer an enjoyable and desirable visitor experience. On the 20th of March, I had the pleasure of addressing the Visit Aberdeenshire conference during Scottish Tourism Month, discussing the tourism and business needs of the industry in the North East. Visit Scotland's public accreditation projects are very successful in the North East, with 487 businesses in the Quality Assurance Scheme and 184 members of the Visitor Information Programme. Liam Kerr. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer. Uh, hotels and restaurants in the North East, which are crucial for our tourist offerings, still feel singled out for high business rates. Given the importance of tourism, which is a key sector uh, of growth in the region's economy, will the Cabinet Secretary back the calls by Aberdeen and Grampian Chamber of Commerce to bring forward the next revaluation to 2021, as both the UK and Welsh governments have already done? Cabinet Secretary. The member will know that we have uh, the most competitive uh, rate system in terms of number of businesses, not least because of uh, the hospitality discount that was continued and there was announced that it was continued uh, to the next uh, revaluation. And in terms of the Barclay Review, you'll be familiar with the Barclay Review and actually we are carrying out due process. Uh, we conducted research uh, obviously extensively in consultation on that and I know that there are challenges and I've been upfront about the challenges in, in terms of costs that many hospitality tourism businesses face. We've got increased uh, numbers of visitors but the spend is not commensurate with the increase in numbers. So therefore, I'm very sympathetic to any support we can give to the hospitality sector. But I would uh, emphasise that we have already reduced rates substantially and kept the cap in for uh, the, the position of uh, hospitality businesses, uh, including those in the hotel sector. Supplementary from Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Just if, if I might put the question again, I understand the answer and I'm grateful for the comprehensive answer, but will the Cabinet Secretary back the Aberdeen and Grampian Chamber of Commerce to bring forward the revaluation? The Aberdeen Chamber of Commerce haven't written to me. I haven't seen their proposals. I'm not responsible for the finance and business policy of this government. That's a responsibility for the finance sector, Secretary. And I'm sure he'd understand that in terms of timing of any revaluation and in the position, he would need to take that in the round, not for one area and not for one sector individually, but for all of Scotland. And with the presiding officer's understanding, uh, it's not my role and responsibility to answer questions for the finance secretary. I would encourage the member to ask that same question of the Finance Secretary. Question six, Neil Bibby. To ask the Scottish Government what discussions the Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Tourism and External Affairs has had with the Minister for Energy, Connectivity and the Islands regarding the importance of ferry services to Aaron's tourism industry. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the importance of physical digital connectivity support our uh, visitor economy in all our islands, including Aaron, uh, together with ongoing uh, Scottish Government investment in new vessels and ferry infrastructure is a frequent topic in my discussions with colleagues. Island connectivity and the crucial role sustainable tourism plays in island economies were amongst the topics related to the 2020 Year of Coasts and Waters, which I discussed with the Minister for Energy, Connectivity and the Islands at our recent meeting on Tuesday, the 23rd of April. Neil Bibby. Is the Minister aware of reports from the Arran Ferry Committee that the number of cancelled crossings has doubled over the last year? In a damning report, the committee state that the current service promotes frustration, confusion, low confidence and reputational damage in threatening the current and future sustainability 
of our island. This disruption affects many aspects of island life, including Arran's tourism industry. Given the only way tourists can get to Arran is by ferry, will the Minister ensure that these concerns are acted on and that confidence is restored in the ferry service that are of such central importance to the island's tourism industry? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President officer, I, as you know, I'm not responsible for ferries either, and that's a responsibility um, obviously with the, lies within the transport portfolio. portfolio. However, I do recognise the absolute importance of ferry connections to tourism in the island's economy. Uh, in August 2018, the Scottish Government announced a £3.5 million resilience fund, with an additional £4 million being allocated to this within the 2019-20 uh, budget period, which we are now entering, to ensure future reliability and availability of vessels uh, to ensure that continuity of service. But also the Scottish Government has increased other measures, for example, road equivalent tariff, uh, which has also uh, benefited the islands considerably and increased visitor numbers. Kenneth Gibson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. And can the Cabinet uh, Secretary indicate what impact the decision of this Government to increase the number of summer sailings, implement road equivalent tariff in 2014, which more than halved ferry fares from what they were under Labour, and the provision of the £12.6 million MV Katrina operating in the Lachlara, on the Lochranza to Cluny Group has had on Aaron's tourism industry? Cabinet Secretary. So despite the fact that I'm not responsible for finance or indeed ferries, uh, uh, tourism is everyone's business and that's why connectivity matters so much. So uh, I am uh, appreciative of the concerns. Um, what I can tell the member is on the main Adros and Roddick route, uh, single car fares were reduced by 64% as a result of this government and passenger fares by 46% as a result of this government's uh, introduction of RET on the Arran uh, links in particular. We know that more people are travelling to and from Arran with an average increase across, uh, across both Arran routes of around 40% for passengers and around 60% for cars since the introduction of RET. I think that demonstrates the commitment of Scotland to North Ayrshire, Arran and indeed our tourism sector in that area. And Jamie Green. Well, the Cabinet Secretary will be relieved that I'm not going to mention the late delivery of the new Arran ferry, although I just have. Um, but on another ferry route in the same area, uh, outside my regional office, I often see cars queue uh, mainly tourists in peak season, but often locals as well. And they can queue for up to two hours just to make the short 10-minute journey from Largs to the island of Cumbria. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she thinks there's a role for government in assisting perhaps local authorities in better ensuring that there are more parking facilities on the mainland and indeed good public transport on islands to encourage tourists to travel as foot passengers rather than feel the need to often take their car instead? Well, the member will be aware that there are very regular, very frequent ferry services to and from the area. Um, obviously, in terms of uh, peak times and flows, that's something that should be managed and the local council can do that. Uh, but these are, these are the results of success. Um, and I'm very pleased that with the uh, Ayrshire growth deal that the Scottish Government have been instrumental in, um, that the focus on the marine economy and tourism more generally is a key part of that. It's something that I'll keep a key, keen interest in. And when I was in North Ayrshire, announcing the £300,000 from the Scottish Government to include the COIG um, investment or the five, circle, the five, the five different routes um, um, investment, which includes obviously Cumbria. Uh, that, I think, again demonstrates our commitment to Ayrshire, to tourism and to the tourism businesses within that area. But everybody has a role to play and it's the partnership that will see the success of that. And I would encourage Council to make sure that any waiting time is limited where possible and to look at the surrounding areas. But again, you know, local councils are in independent of government. Uh, his party is always reminding us of that, so we have to respect the independence of councils to make these decisions. Question number seven, Annabel Ewing. <coughs> to ask the Scottish Government how it promotes tourism in the Cowdenbeath constituency. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, the Scottish Government fully recognises the importance of tourism to the economy and continues its benefits across the whole of Scotland. And uh, only yesterday I launched the new Fourth Bridges strategy, highlighting Fife's role as a gateway to the north across the iconic Queensferry crossing. Uh, the constituency of Cowdenbeath possesses its own unique attractions for visitors and locals alike. And with Visit Scotland, we will continue to work with local authorities, destination management organisations and businesses to ensure uh, that each of Scotland's destinations can offer exciting, enjoyable and high quality experiences. Annabel Ewing. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her answer and I do very much welcome the launch of the new Fourth Bridges strategy. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary may be aware of another uh, recently launched initiative and that is the new Five Pilgrim Way and the starting point, one of the starting points of the new Five Pilgrim Way is at North Queensferry in my constituency and the Pilgrim Way passes through historic 
in Verkeething and the scenic Lahore Meadows Country Park. Can the Cabinet Secretary advise as to what plans the Scottish Government has to promote this important tourist route that winds through the heart of Fife so that maximum benefit for local communities can be ensured? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I am very keen that we support uh, the Pilgrim Way. It's something I know has been thought of and planned for some time. Uh, Visit Scotland is working closely with Five Council and Five Coast and Countryside Trust on the launch of the Pilgrim Way. Um, and I think all communities uh, must benefit from the new route. Uh, the member uh, points out it starts in North Queensferry, where I was yesterday, um, and that's the starting point of the Pilgrim Way. So the uh, Fourth Bridges Tourism Strategy is a great opportunity. It's a 10-year plan to make sure we can grow tourism uh, using the opportunity that is provided by the iconic three bridges and, uh, and certainly North Queensferry has other attractions uh, as well including the Stevenson Lighthouse on it which I had the pleasure of lighting yesterday and I'm delighted that the local volunteers who run that lighthouse presented me with a certificate um, demonstrating that I have passed the short introductory course in lighthouse keeping. Excellent. And on that cheery note uh, apologies to Jenny Garuth for not reaching the question that ends uh, our topical portfolio questions. We're going to move on to the next item of business. But we'll just take a few seconds for ministers and members to change seats.